Hi everybody, this is Ansi for Sit Society, and today I want to talk about effectors. Because they're new in Film 3, and they're a pretty neat way to uh, test on basic values in your film simulation, and then as a result of this test, apply either turbulence or different colors, etc., etc., back into your fume. So an effector essentially reads values from a fume grid, and then based on those values, reapplies another value back into the fume grid. Uh, so I want to do a super basic object-based explosion, and I'm going to use effectors to perturb the explosion, and in the second part I'm going to use another effector to manipulate the color based on temperature, for example, which uh, I found out for explosions can help you fake uh, multi-scattering, because multi-scattering can add quite some render time, depending on the complexity of your simulation. So I use that, and I use that in connection with uh, multi-scattering to support the effect of multi-scattering when I needed uh, a particular look in subsurface scattering. But let's create our fume grid first. I still run 3.5.1, and uh, let's not show the slices here. Uh, we'll get to that later. Let's center this grid, and uh, let's actually make that an even 200, 200, 200. And uh, for now, just a spacing of 2. Uh, we'll add detail as we go and when we like what we see. Uh, as I said, I'm going to make an object-based explosion and I'm going to start with a geosphere that is set to hemisphere. Because we only need half the explosion, we're going to make the floor a collision object and uh, therefore half a sphere is plenty. Uh, Radius of 30 is probably fine. And what I'm going to do is I want to animate the uh, radius and the Z position. I want it to be outside of the grid, then appear into the grid, growing inside here, and then disappear back out of the grid. So let's turn that back down here, outside of the grid, radius zero. Then let's say it's frame five on the floor there, and frame and radius of 30. So it kind of grows up and then grows, and then Oh, well, just a couple of frames. I just shift drag the uh, shift drag the first frame, so it disappears a bit faster than it appeared. And this is going to be our emitter, and uh, therefore we need an object source. And as it enters at around frame three, it'll emit fuel, temperature, and smoke, etc. And then it'll disappear very rapidly. And the fuel emissions automatically turn off, so we don't need to animate any of those values. We just had our object leave the grid. So let's go in here and let's create an object source. And let's add in our geosphere here. And I want the smoke to be zero because I want all the smoke to be uh, emitted just from the fuel as it burns off. So we need create fuel create smoke on. Um, let's have a block density of 5. We can change that later if need be. And um, right off the back, uh, let's see how that looks and what we get. So nothing happens. The hemisphere enters the grid and then exits it. There's no more fuel emission. Therefore, there's only smoke remaining and everything billows up. I just stopped that here. So very quick, bang and gone. So all the fuel is burned off around frame 15. Um, let's actually have a bit more uh, grid density here. And uh, simulation times are still under a second, so that's uh, something we can live with. And then our billow will look uh, a little bit nicer. So the problem with that is that this doesn't look very appealing. It's a very hemispherical uh, explosion still, there's, because that is the shape of our object. It's uh, resembling that shape quite nicely. And the thing is, the first thing we want to check is that we emit from a volume. That's new in Trim 3, that you can now emit from the object's volume. And uh, that'll make for uh, 
fuel to be emitted all the way inside of this hemisphere. And uh, first thing I want to do is I want to lower my uh, maximum iterations. That will bring sim times even further down. And I want to make the floor a collision object, so there will be uh, smoke lingering down here. <laughs> so now I want to sim that. There will be all the fuel burning off. And uh, as you can see on the side, there it is uh, kind of stopped. It can't expand on the floor because it's a collision object now, and that makes for a bit more expansion on the edges. And then we have this nice uh, smoke stuff just lingering around here. And then it'll all uh, just billow up. So uh, I'm going to show you one or two techniques to prevent this billowing. The first one would be uh, to add a noise modifier to this hemisphere. Let's do a scale of 20 maybe. Uh, set that to fractal. And uh, let's give a displacement of 10 and check animated. So now the shape is already a bit more broken up. And because it's set to animated, it will change its noise shape over time as it grows. So that really looks a little bit more like an explosion uh, shape right here. Then in our object source, we can uh, play with the object velocity. And that will inherit the velocity of this object and push velocities outwards in the direction of the, uh, the, the object's motion. So if we make that like 5. And now sim, uh, we already see a pretty more nicer, more broken up shape right here. But it's going pretty high up. 5 is a pretty severe number, but uh, I just want to get the point across here. And uh, now it pushes fuel further into the grid, so it takes a bit longer to burn off. But let's just leave it at that here. Uh, the, the initial shape, like around frame 4 here, is already uh, a little less spherical. Another thing you can do is you can add extra velocity. This will only have an effect if you add a map in here. Set so it's from intensity, and then we create a like a noise map. I make that a smaller size, and set that to fractal, and play a bit with the low high threshold. So we have very bright and very dark areas, and we add this noise map in here. I turn that back down to one, and make this five, just to illustrate the effect. Uh, and now the uh, the smoke will be displaced based on the grayscale map. More where it's white, less where it's black, because it reads the intensity of the map and uses that for um, pushing out velocities. So a combination of those two can be used to get rid of the shape. Uh, another thing would be to introduce turbulence. That doesn't look all too bad. Another thing would be turbulence. Let's set that back down to 1, turn it off. So this is the default values. And then in the simulation tab, let's have a turbulence of 1. And then at frame 10, when it's all over and done with, uh, let's make that back to 0. So this all starts uh, at 10 with 0. The sphere doesn't enter until frame 3, but it's all right. It'll still have 0.7 turbulence. That is plenty. And let's draw the scale here to 5 um, frames we can keep as is. And add more detail, detail 3. Uh, but detail at 5 and detail 3, I virtually barely see any difference here. Uh, small as tiny as 5. So uh, less detail was even faster. So let's go with a smaller value. And uh, so that'll displace uh, Osprey here, and then we get a little smaller detail on the billows using noise. The problem with uh, this turbulence is that it's adding turbulence through the board. With the factors you have the control to add only turbulence to uh, certain aspects of your simulation, for example, only on the fuel, only on the smoke, etc. And uh, you can only apply turbulence when a certain um, a certain value is true. For example, you check against fuel. And that's what we want to do. I uh, turn off the turbulence here. Let's get rid of the animation. And I zero that out. Uh, another thing down here that I want to animate 
is the expansion. So let's have an expansion of three, and then at frame 10, expansion of one. So that'll help the fuel to be pushed out a bit. And uh, I also want to, let's add a higher heat production, like 100. Um, given our time scale of three, that's pretty high. I um, want the fuel to burn off very fast. So um, let's have heat production of 100. And they'll make, yeah, for faster fuel consumption, if you want. Now let's also add a burn rate of 50, same here. So the explosion is over, the fuel is all burned off uh, rather quickly. If we turn off smoke here and look just at the fire, uh, there's still a good amount uh, of fuel remaining at frame 80, uh, 18, and the explosion would be a second longer than where I just want it to be like an initial burst, bam, and then gone, and then there's just going to be smoke as a remainder in our scene. So let's make our effector. And there we go. We want to call this effector underscore turbulence. And we got to give it a channel name. That's the first thing you want to do that's easy to forget. I just call it turb, turbulence. And what I want to check is, I want to check against our fuel. So when there, where there's a lot of fuel, I want a lot of displacement to perturb our fireball. So the smoke remains pretty much untarnished from that. The smoke will emit only when fuel is burned off anyways. So uh, in order to find out which values fit best here, uh, we can display our fuel. And down here, we can display numeric values if we use the slicing option. And we can pick a good chunk here. And I usually reduce it, uh, reduce the amount of voxels in the viewport because it can, be, can get pretty full and chaotic. And uh, the values I'm seeing here are between zero and like 35, roundabout. So uh, we're emitting a fuel of 100, but um, it burns off pretty quickly. So uh, zero and hundred. So let's say the when the fuel is between five and fifty, that's only the core. All the outskirts here are not affected by that. When it's between five and fifty. Let's have a displacement. So we leave that constant. We want to perturb everything, and uh, we get that a uh, pretty severe noise. And I want to animate that down at frame. Let's say frame 15, I zero that back out. So by the time the uh, fuel starts emitting, we have a displacement of eight that's uh, pretty severe. So that'll visually have an effect. But first thing we gotta do before we sim is we gotta connect this effector. We do all these little check boxes here are new. They uh, can connect to effectors and we wanna have the turbulence. And in our channel name here, we check turb, the channel we just created. So now this, turbulence here, we'll apply the turbulence we have here in the turbulent noise, but only where fuel is between 5 and values of 50. And we'll probably go even higher, just 10 and 50, so the outsides are pretty unaffected. And if we send that through, our fireball is more broken up than before. And uh, the size of our perturbing is 5, and that burns off. And now that the fuel is burned off entirely, there won't be any more uh, turbulence, because it's all burned off. In addition to that, I, I ramp animated down usually, um, because I want only the initial to have a very high uh, turbulence. And then as the time scale animates down, uh, we don't need to introduce that much turbulence anyways because it'll go through the uh, turbulence iteration faster the higher the time scale is. So let's stop that. And if we scrub through here, our shape is not dramatically hemispherical anymore. This, especially this here, is nice explosion peaks. Um, that's how a cool explosion could look like. Let's show the smoke, and let's actually make that a bit darker. 
Uh, let's make that all the way black, actually. And let's make our background a bit brighter. So there goes bang, and then the there's no turbulence anymore. Everything just rises as is. And if I scrub through the uh, detail we had before, it's smaller because now we have more expansion. But also check the detail of the bill. It's all pretty even and flat. Where where our turbulence was applied, we get this all this detail here. And I remind you, we have pretty low maximum iterations, and we didn't change any of our grid detail either. So even at a grid detail of uh, 100, 100, 100, this will make uh, for pretty decent detail. And the sim times are still under a second. If you would sim that with regular turbulence, uh, you would see probably all the grid fall all the way with uh, velocities, and your sim times would significantly rise. I'll let one take a run through here. So we see the full effect of uh, our explosion. But if you look at the floor here, what remains, all that, uh, that's pretty decent detail for as low as we simulate right now, 100, 100, 100, with a uh, 50 maximum iterations, where the default is 200. So I'll let that run through. Uh, it says it's about six seconds remaining. And it's hitting the grid up there, but that's all right. We're going to take care of that in a second. So that's all a pretty decent detail for as low as we simmed. And uh, we get rid of our nasty billow uh, pretty nicely. This is a nicer spiky shape overall. And then just everything uh, rises up. And uh, should our stuff leave the grid, uh, we can always set uh, x and y, the x and y axis, to uh, expand, boundless, and z plus. Uh, z minus is a collision object, so only, we only need z plus to be able to expand. So should it hit the grid, it'll uh, update the adaptive grid and scale it accordingly. And uh, let's display fire and smoke. And uh, if you want to see the, uh, for example, the, the how much smoke you have in your grid, you reduce the grid pretty dramatically. And let's slice that just uh, 10 voxels wide. And there you can see the amount of smoke we have is uh, between zero and values slightly above one and a half. The initial, uh, when fuel burns off, is 5. But it'll dissipate over time based on the default dissipation of our smoke. All right, so this is a basic factor for turbulence. If you want that even more severe, uh, make those values higher. And also, uh, here in the sim tab, uh, make your scale bigger, or animate the scale even. But for initial shapes, I like that a lot over the object velocity and extra velocity because it'll push the velocities all the way in the grid and your depth of it will be very big, uh, very fast, because all these object velocities are pushed through in addition. And all the perturbing we have happening here right now is basically just from our effector that checks where we have fuel, which is only the case for very few frames. And when the fuel is between uh, 10 and 5, which is only for a very short amount of time, it perturbs. And in addition to that, uh, I usually animate my vector field to emphasize the, uh, that there's no perturbing anymore. 